to another edition of Know Your History. I'm Mr. Ben, and today we're going to be talking about General Joshua Blackwood Howe. Um, but before I talk about him, um, I wanted to address a question that uh, someone had asked me. What is that white triangle on your hat? What is that doing there, Mr. Ben? And I um, would like to explain that it's actually a Corps badge. So in the uh, Union armies, um, it actually started with the Army of the Potomac. It was an identifying uh, symbol that uh, actually General Joseph Hooker was uh, his idea to build a uh, esprit de corps to build um, morale within the with, within the army uh, after several defeats. But it was it was also a way of identifying which soldiers belonged to what corps. Now the uh, white triangle would signify that uh, I belong to the 3rd Corps, 2nd Division. The 1st uh, Corps was uh, red, would be a red circle, and um, the 2nd Corps was a trefoil, which would be blue, and, uh, and so forth. So they had s several corps, and uh, the soldiers were quite proud of uh, their uh, what corps they belonged to, so they took to wearing them on their hats or their uh, on their uniform jackets. But anyway, getting back to General Howe. General Howe uh, didn't become a general until after he was dead. Yes, he was uh, promoted posthumously. But uh, before I get to that point, it's always good to start at the beginning. So General Howe was born uh, near Woodbury in what is now West Deptford, and he lived on the family estate called Fancy Hill, which the family had been there along the Delaware uh, since 1688. And uh, although they were Quakers, um, Howell's uh, father served as a colonel in the War of 1812, and his grandfather served as a quartermaster in the Revolutionary War. Of course, they were uh, voted out of the society for um, serving in the military. Now, uh, General Howe was born uh, on September 11, 1806, and he went to school in Woodbury, Woodbury Academy. Uh, he uh, studied law across the river in Philadelphia, and he started his own law practice in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, which is in the western part of the state, in Fayette County. Now, uh, he was also involved in the local militia, and when the Civil War began in 1861, uh, Howe was uh, commissioned a colonel of the 85th Pennsylvania. And here is a picture of Colonel Howe. And uh, his first battle, he spent the winter of 61 uh, in the Washington defenses with the 85th Pennsylvania. But when McClellan's, uh, General McClellan's ill-fated Peninsula campaign got rolling, uh, he served under General George Brinton McClellan uh, on the peninsula. Now McClellan, uh, people like to call him the young Napoleon. They had high hopes for General McClellan, but uh, really the only thing that he had in common with uh, General Napoleon or Napoleon Bonaparte was that he liked to tuck his uh, hand into his jacket when he took his photographs. But And also they were both quite short or purportedly uh, Anyway, the young Napoleon um, was a great organizer, and he put the army together after uh, the disaster at first Bull Run. And uh, they only had one fatal flaw, which uh, Lincoln, President Lincoln aptly described as, uh, well, McClellan had the slows. So on his ponderous advance up the peninsula, uh, he... Um, Fought several battles. Um, of course, he had. Uh, did you know, by the way, that the uh, the Union had an air force? That's right. Under Professor Thaddeus Lowe, uh, who uh, developed a uh, generator that he a portable generator that he could pump hydrogen into his observation balloons, and he could go up in one of these balloons, and uh, men would hold the guide ropes, and he would be able to observe the enemy at a, a great distance. So this was the first Air Force. 
Professor Thaddeus Lowe, L-O-W-E, and his observation balloons. Now getting back to Colonel Howe, he fought valiantly at the Battle of Seven Pines, also known as the Battle of Fair Oak Station, and he led his men, the 85th Pennsylvania, in a counterattack uh, that's really saved the day, or helped save the day for General McClellan uh, in that particular victory. Some might call it a drawn battle. Uh, after uh, the Peninsula Campaign ended in uh, failure, uh, Colonel Howe was sent to uh, North Carolina, where he served in the uh, Goldsboro Campaign with his 85th Pennsylvania, and he served under this man, General Quincy A. Gilmore. Uh, now, Gilmore was like McClellan. He was an engineer, very methodical, and uh, they were on the peninsula, on the, sorry, on Morris Island. Uh, they had to um, reduce uh, Fort Wagner, sometimes called Battery Wagner, in order to get into the Charleston Harbor. Um, and so they built approaches. They were uh, um, built by uh, sappers. Uh, there's a story there. They're, they built saps to get to uh, trenches to get to uh, close enough to bombard uh, Fort Wagner. And um, they also built these uh, shelters called bomb proofs. Well, this bomb proof wasn't very bomb proof because a shell exploded over this particular bomb proof and a fragment of that shell wounded Colonel Howell uh, in the head, knocking him unconscious. Now, his men thought he was, he was killed, but in fact, he came to and it was, uh, he had a minor concussion, which he soon recovered from. Now, after the uh, Peninsula Camp, or sorry, the uh, Charleston siege, uh, which was also unsuccessful, um, Colonel uh, Howe, and he's now in command of a brigade, is sent to the Army of the James, where he fights under this man, General Benjamin Butler known as Beast Butler in the South for his brutal occupation of New Orleans in 1862, earlier in the war. Now some, just an aside here, some would say that General Butler was the ugliest general in either army. Now I leave that to your judgment. Here's an actual photograph next to my drawing of, can you see that, General Butler. Uh, he was actually a brilliant man. He was uh, a politician. He was a lawyer, a politician, and they, they say his wife was beautiful. But uh, anyway, uh, he fought uh, <clears throat> on the uh, Virginia Peninsula known as uh, Bermuda Hundred. And there, Colonel Howe once again distinguished himself uh, with his brigade, charging uh, a section of conf and taking Confederate earthworks. There is a drawing uh, depicting that. Um, so everywhere Colonel Howe fought, he fought valiantly and was uh, quite successful, um, no matter who he fought under. Now, sadly, um, after the Bermuda, Bermuda Hunter campaign, that was May of 1864, uh, during the summer, um, Colonel Howe took part in the siege of Petersburg, Virginia, and on, in September, uh, after three days after celebrating his 58th birthday, uh, Colonel Howe went to mount his horse. Um, it was a new horse, and, and uh, apparently he pulled on the wrong rein, you know. I guess these things, these horses are like, you know, cars, like stick shifts. You, you know, you have to get it in the right gear. And the horse reared up and fell back on top of uh, Colonel Howe, crushing him. Um, he lingered for a few days. I mean, we're talking about, I don't know, 2,000 pounds of horse flesh crashing down on uh, the hapless Colonel Howe. And he was... Um, lingered for a while, but then passed away. Uh, his body, oh, by the way, and uh, seven months later, he was commissioned Brigadier General. 
uh, for his distinguished service up to that point. Um, the newspaper accounts, uh, Philadelphia Inquirer, contemporary account, said that the horse was a vicious animal. So I don't know uh, if we can blame it on the horse or not, or the fact that he pulled on the, uh, the wrong reins. So uh, Colonel Howell's body was embalmed and shipped back to Woodbury, uh, where he grew up. And uh, there was a service conducted at the old Presbyterian Church on North Broad Street. And he was buried in the churchyard there. Uh, however, um, at some point he was reinterred. And now he lies buried at Eglinton Cemetery in Clarksboro with his family and um there's a photograph of his gravestone at Eglinton Cemetery in Clarksboro, New Jersey, very close to uh, the scenes of his boyhood. So I'm sure Colonel Howell and now General Howell would have been uh, very happy to have died in, in battle uh, facing the enemy. Unfortunately, his fate was to um, die uh, in a horse accident behind the lines. But either way, um, dead is dead, and um, uh, he served valiantly, and uh, we want to remember his service. He's sadly been uh, quite forgotten. Uh, General Howe, Joshua Blackwood Howe of Woodbury, New Jersey. And here's an actual photograph of the general. Well, that's about it for today. Um, hope you uh, enjoyed the program, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Know Your History. And just remember, if you go horseback riding, you know, just hang on uh, to the right reins. All right, that, that's all for now. See you next time. Bye.